Hi, so today we're going to be going over the installation of the JTEC Photonics laser on the Onefinity Elite Series machines. It's going to be the 24 watt Quad Pro laser that we're going to demonstrate today, but most of the lasers that we sell will be very similar in the instructions. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to go over the contents of the box. Uh, in this case, we have the uh, 24 watt Quad Pro laser head and the safety interface board with keys. Um, some other lasers might have a, a driver. Uh, we have the amount for the safety interface board with its associated hardware. Um, we have the laser head mount, uh, the input cable, a focusing tool, um, the extension cable, and the power supply. There's going to be some other small things, uh, paperwork and instructions as well in your package. Okay, now we're going to take our mount and our four M515 screws. Uh, I'm going to use our Allen key wrench. Uh, ours is uh, the one that fits is a, a number three uh, metric. And we're going to place the screws into the four holes in the front of your spindle router holder. Just screw them in. Now you can adjust your laser up or down depending on your material and, and where your router behind it is sitting. I'm going to leave it just right here in the middle and tighten it up. On the 24 watt and other lasers, there's going to be keyed tabs on the back screws that hold into the, the line up and hold into the mount. Um, these can be loosened or tightened um, depending on how, how you want it to sit on the mount. You can see if I loosen them all the way, um, you'll hit the, the keys and then it will suck it down. You can feel it suck down and it won't be super tight. So one of the things you can do is you can tighten these just slightly so that they'll fit into the keyhole and then you push down and not only is it going to be in the keyhole tightly but it's also going to be the magnets will be hitting it in so it will be nice and secure if you want to even get it more secure you can take another additional screw uh, uh, allen key and go and tighten it into the back a little bit more um, it it is pretty pretty sturdy here and you can see by trying to get it off it's really hard to get off as well. So we've taken the uh, laser head um, controller, uh, uh, laser head cable here, and zip tied it to the side. And we're going to take the extension cables and start wrapping or uh, running it through this uh, chain in the back. So the extension cable, let's grab our 15 foot extension cable here and make sure that we have the female side of the cable. And I'm going to just attach it to the laser head um, cable just to make sure that it is the correct one um, before we start running our cables. And then we can now start opening up the cable chain. So I'm going to go grab a screwdriver to make it easier. There's going to be small holes right here on the cable chains that show a little picture of a screwdriver that you can then put in a little flat head screwdriver and push the, the cable chains open. Okay, so I've got my screwdriver. I'm going to put it in here. All you need to do is put it in the hole and press down, and they should open up. Okay, now that they're all opened, we can start putting the cable in. Alternatively, you could take the two screws off the top here and remove these motor cables on the side and then have the whole cable chain lay down flat. Um, I chose not to do it this way. 
Okay, so now we can take and leave just a slight bit of slack here. Um, so we put the uh, put this through. I'm going to take this off again. I'm going to put it through this side. I'm going to pop this guy off just for a second. Oop, I accidentally closed that one. So I'm going to take this and put it through this one. I'm going to put this guy, this one back on. So I popped it, the whole chain off there for a second. And I put the, the end through. The end through, I'm going to give just enough slack so that it mates with the other side of the laser, uh, laser head here. And then I'm going to slowly start running it through the cable chain and closing them up. Okay, now all the cable is inside the cable chain on the back and we can move on to the next step. Okay, so, so now we moved on to the other side of the machine and we are going to put this uh, cable through the side cable chain. So we're going to do the same thing we did before and open up all of these cable chains the entire way and take uh, it off the, the mount. I'm gonna do that now. Going to take the end off here by rotating it slightly so that we can fit it in. It's going to be a little bit harder to fit this cable in because there's already two cables in here, but it will work. Just kind of squeeze it in right to the side of it, of the other two, and it will work. To put this piece back in, make sure all your cable chains are snapped. And there you have it, all the way wired to the front of the machine, the extension cables. Okay, so now we're going to take our mounting back plate and our laser driver safety interface board and we're going to um, put the two screws through the back here and then those will line up with this. We're going to put it in the sides here. line it up with the holes and then we're going to have our two nuts go on the top now if you don't have a back plate on your kit it means that you have one of the earlier ones and you can go to our website at jtechphotonics.com and then order just the plate um, to fit on the back of the masso uh, 
So now we're going to put it onto the back of the mask. So you don't necessarily need this back plate, but it is kind of convenient for putting the laser driver or the, the safety interface boards on the back of the mask. So it's going to line up with these four holes on the back of the mask screen. So we're just going to put the screws, screws in. I'm going to put one in so we can just match it up with the top one. And then put another one on the other side. Then just tighten all of them up. Okay, now the laser dryer is on there. Let's go and get the cables plugged into it. All right, so now let's connect our cables. We have our power cable which is going to be the bullet cable. It's going to go into the power, which is right next to this small white one, if I can see it. Feel it there. There it goes. Um, and then we're going to have our extension cable that we uh, put all the way through the cable chains. That goes into that white connector on the outside. It clicks in. And then lastly, we're going to have this um, small Molex Mini Fit Junior cable that's around three feet. It's going to go into the black connector right next to that white one. There you go. All right, so now we've turned the Masso controller on and we are going to set up the laser engraver on here. Uh, we're going to do it on here. Um, uh, if it's hard to see on the screen, then we're going to have it all on the website as well, and, and you can find it on the forum. But we're going to first thing we're going to do is go into um, setup, and the password's not a password, so just press enter. Um, and then we're going to go to uh, output 11, and we're going to select on output 11, we're going to double click that, and we're going to select laser engraver engraving PWM. Press select. That sets up that. And then we're going to go over to the left here and hit this double click that multi head and we're going to click on the laser engraving cutting. And then make sure the PWM frequency says 4000. Um, that's the, the lowest you can go, um, which th that's what the JTEC laser needs to, to be set at. And then normally we have the offset at zero. Um, if you're going to be using um, uh, your light burn as, as the, the, your zero is going to be wherever your laser is at, then you'd leave that at zero. If you want to actually measure an offset and do tool offsets, then you can put a tool offset in there. So we're going to save that. And then one of the things we're going to try doing after this is turning the laser on, because that's all you really need to do um, on the Masso right now. So let's go try to turn the laser on. Okay, so when you're ready to, uh, to get the laser driver and safety interface board um, turned on, you're going to put the key in, and then you're going to push it in a little bit and turn it to the right, and it should lock in place. You should not be able to take that key out. Then there's a little red reset button. If you have it plugged in um, and the power is turned on to the outlet, then you can press this red reset button and you will hear a little click. And that click is the interlock, power interlock engaging in here. If you don't hear a click, then check to make sure your power is connected correctly and you have an LED on your power brick. Make sure that this little switch in the front is pushed towards the LEDs. That means that way, towards the LEDs. And that is going to put it in input mode. If you have it the other way, it's going to turn the laser on full power, which you don't want. So we're going to then turn the power on here, the switch here. And you should see the, here the fans turn on on the laser, and you should also see one green LED. That one green LED means that it is enabled and ready to go. If you push this to the other side, you will get two green LEDs, and you will have the laser fire, um, fire in manual. So you can see that, and the laser will fire. 
All right, so now let's go um, to the MDI. And it shows right now we have a different tool in there. Um, so we're going to go to the MDI and go just to, to, to get it so we can turn the laser on in low power. We're going to press the MDI button, and then we're going to change the tool. So the tool is actually going to be, um, let's see. Going to be T111 and then an M6. And then we're going to run that. And that's going to be our laser engraver. So now it's just switched to laser engraving um, because that's our tool 111 is our laser engraving tool. And that's just default in Masso. That's just part of Masso. So if we want to turn it on in low, low power, I'm going to turn the power switch on for the laser. So you can hear the laser going up. And then I'm going to do a, an M3 space. And I think I'm going to try doing, let's just try doing like an S15. I'm going to run this. And you can see the laser popped up here. And, and it should be in low power, so I can turn it off here. Um, let's just look and see if we can get both in the same picture here and, and show you it going in low power. So there's a little bit of glare here, but you can see if I, I put in that M3 S15 and I compress the laser button, and sure enough, the laser comes on and then you put it, turn it off. So you can jog around and use this to find your center position. Um, in some places, in some uh, machines, your M value, your S value is going to be a little bit less or a little bit more. So let's try S10 and run that. And now you can see that the laser is even lower power. You can barely, barely see it um, on there. So I have my goggles on and I'm going to just turn this all the way up just to show you that you can do different power controls. So M3 S. Uh, 100. Let's run that. That's pretty pretty bright. M M3 3S1000. Run that. Whoa! See, that's pretty really bright. So that's 100% power. So S100 is 10%. And you can see. That's, that's pretty bright. So M3 is 10, or M S100 is 10%, um, S10 is 1%. So a low power would be um, M3 S10. So let's go back in MDI, M3 S10, and run that. And it's barely, you can barely see it turned on. Okay, and that's that. To switch to um, back to another tool after you're all done with this and you're all done with carving, um, you can simply do uh, switch to another tool. I think we have our V-bit stored in um, tool 11. So I'm just going to run that. And you'll notice it's back to our 90 degree V-bit. And we can now use our uh, as a carving again. All right, so we're going to start by um, setting up Lightburn here. We, we like Lightburn uh, as a software package because it has a lot uh, of features for the laser. Um, you can use others, but we're just going to show you how to set up Lightburn. I'm going to go to Devices down here, and we're going to go to Create Manually. And we're going to create uh, the one that says GRBL M3 and press Next. Um, you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it my Onefinity Elite. And then you can put whatever machine you have on it. Um, everybody has different dimensions. Um, I believe we have the foreman, not the foreman, we have the dreamman. So I think ours is 32 by 32. Um, yours might be, if it's the foreman, I think it's 48 by 48, but this is gonna be your work area of the machine. So just put in what you believe your work area is, look that up on your documentation. Um, we're gonna turn off the auto home because we're just gonna be creating G code for this, not actually being connected to the machine. Um, and we're just gonna keep it in the front left for our home. Um, and so we can just click finish here and we have a new machine. I'm going to press OK. I'm going to go down here and then put my Onefinity Elite as my machine. And you can see the grid changes to 32 by 32. Um, it doesn't matter. You don't have to have a COM port. It's going to say that the console is just going to be, it's not going to have anything because we're not going to be connected to anything. Um, 
to the move tab and all that stuff doesn't matter. The one thing we are gonna need to set up is go up to this wrench and screwdriver up here and click on the G code button. There's gonna be start G code you need to have for this. So for the start G code, we're gonna put in that tool that is the laser tool. So it's gonna be T111M06 or just M6 either way. Um, and then you're gonna put in an S0. That will make sure that the tool is, is off when it gets started. Um, and also an M5, so that's also another thing that makes sure it's off. So this is gonna be in your header of your G-code. Um, in the end G-code, you can put in, um, you can either leave a blank, uh, which means that at the end of your G-code, it's still gonna be set up for laser. If you wanted to, you could put in um, another tool change in there, uh, our tool from our video, like we have a V-bit in tool 11, and you can do M06, so that's gonna change it to back to carving. And then you can put an S S0 and an M5 in there as well because it's the end of the end of the program. So you don't necessarily need to do the end G code, but this will just basically make it all ready to do carving again and another another um, uh, you know after you're done lasering. If you want to continue lasering, just leave this blank. Press OK, and that will put your G code in. So we can do a little test G code. Um, if I do here, I say test. Uh, you can see that our um, origin is in the center, um, that's fine for me. You can do it bottom left here if you want, or top right, or whatever, it's over here. Um, it's gonna basically base it on your current position. Um, in the cut layers tab, I'm gonna do a little fill. Um, let's say the line interval is 0 0.006, that's fine. I'll do a speed of like 1, 140 at, uh, I don't know, 80% for the 24 watt. Uh, with one pass and press OK. Um, you can go to the preview here and you can see it's just gonna go and do a, a just a little test here. Um, now, if I wanted to um, run this on the Leap Machine, I just go to press Save G Code and it pops up my um, uh, how to save it and I'm just gonna put in here my test. And so I'm just gonna call it test and press OK. And that file now is ready to go onto uh, the machine. Um, so we can take that and, and transfer it over to the machine, uh, no matter how, how we, you know, wh whichever way we want to. So that's a quick and easy uh, light burn tutorial right there um, on how to uh, uh, set up the machine and, uh, and, and get the file ready for lasering. So there's the JTEC Photonics laser setup instructions for the Elite Series machines by Onefinity. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please contact uh, the support team at JTEC Photonics at customer service at jtechphotonics.com or look us up on the website and give us a call. We're happy to help. You can also find more instructions and accessories on the JTEC website. Uh, the instructions are under upgrade instructions and look for the Onefinity. And if you want to look at our store, look on the left for the shop. Thanks.